A new report shows many investors who are renting out new condos in Canada's largest city are losing money every month. For more on the report by CIBC and Urban Nation, we are joined by Sean Hildebrand, president of Urban Nation. Thanks so much for joining us today, Sean. Thanks for having me. This is a really interesting report that you did along with uh, Benny Tal at, at CIBC. I wonder if first you could just give us a bit of a sense of um, how much uh, a city like Toronto is, is relying on investors in order to sort of fund the condo construction that's happening in the city. Yeah, condo construction uh, really does all the heavy lifting for new home development in the GTA. Condos represent over 60% of all new housing construction starts in the region. And condo investors are the largest buyers of new construction condos. They represent at least 70% of all new condo sales. So if investors aren't buying pre-sale condos, then developers ultimately won't be building them. And then when we look at the ownership in terms of, you know, rental properties or, or condos um, to, to get a sense of, you know, what's being used as a rental property, it, it's also a, a pretty large percentage when it comes down to investors holding condos that are then renting them out for, for a longer term. Yeah, the vast majority of, of, of investors that buy new condos uh, ultimately add them into the rental market. So they'll buy pre-sale wait the five years or so during the development time frame, and then once the unit is ready for completion, uh, generally in the past, uh, the rents have been high enough to cover the mortgage costs, the property taxes, and the condo fees. Uh, but that started to change in 2022. We started to see that the majority of, um, of condo investors were finding themselves in a negative cash flow uh, situation, which is you know, potentially problematic for the market because um, condo investors and condo rental units represents about 90% of all new rental units that are added to the market in the GTA. Yeah, we're just looking at one of your uh, uh, graphics here showing that fewer condos are, are cash flow positive uh, in 2022, that number going down to 48%. Um, but we've got another one as well that shows uh, uh, the condo price versus uh, rent breakdown. Um, it shows new condo prices. Uh, that's the white line there. And then the blue line is resale uh, condo prices. And then condo rents is the yellow line. And you're seeing uh, the blue line, the resale condo prices cross over um, uh, below the, the condo rents. Can you give us a sense of just how this the math is, is changing for some of these uh, or for many of these investors who did buy pre-sale condos? Well, I think the first important point to make is that um, investors are still making money, right? The units that are reaching completion now were bought several years ago at much lower prices. So the value of the units uh, is worth more than what they were paid several years ago by the time the units reach completion. So there's still capital appreciation based on how well the market has done over the last number of years. Um, that will start to change, however, in the years to come. Uh, most of the units um, that are under construction still were bought uh, at near or at peak prices. So the units that will be reaching completion in the years to come will be coming with uh, increasingly higher mortgage payments due to obviously higher interest rates, but also because of the fact that they were bought at increasingly higher prices. The units that are closing today were bought probably 30% below current market prices. So even with uh, rents having risen considerably over the last couple of years, um, it hasn't been enough uh, to offset the increase in mortgage costs. What we found was that when we looked at the average mortgage payment for units that were reaching completion in 2021 versus 2022, I had increased by nearly 40%. So even with 15% you know, growth in rents over the last year, it simply hasn't been enough, and we're seeing that the average negative cash flow position is, is over $200 a month. When we looked at more recent data for the first uh, quarter of 2023, it had moved into uh, negative $400 a month. When you look to the next few years, I think it's going to become increasingly more difficult, again, because those units that are under construction right now were bought at uh, peak prices. Yeah, there's we, we've got that uh, graphic that we can put up as well just to show that uh, the average cash flow was positive the past two years, you know, $63, $26 there, but then, uh, you know, a negative 223. So what kind of pressure does that end up putting on some of these uh, condo investors who are, you know, every month having to uh, pitch in essentially to to keep that to keep carrying that condo? Yeah, so I think um, on, on the one hand, what we found was that 25% uh, of all condo investors didn't get a mortgage at all 
So they weren't they weren't leveraged. Uh, for the 75% that were, uh, they were in a negative cash flow position, as you say, by just over $200 a month. Um, some of that includes some mortgage uh, or some principal repayment. So there is some equity accumulation inherent in that payment as well. Um, but uh, you know, others are, are seeing negative cash flow rise considerably. It, it can be problematic for the market in the sense that if condo investors find it increasingly more difficult in that buy and hold model, they may not be there to the same extent as in the past. Um, and this is problematic for a market that relies heavily on condo investors. You know, condo investors have been great for the market. Without them, we wouldn't have nearly the amount of rental supply uh, that we do today. So the fact that they're in a more precarious situation calls into question, you know, how much more rental supply are we going to get out of them and really calls for the need to build more traditional purpose-built rental housing supply, which we haven't really seen much of. Uh, when we look to the future, you have immigration levels rising, you have home ownership affordability at generational lows. Rental demand is only going to be increasing, whereas the supply, as we're learning, is, uh, is actually starting to move in the opposite direction. Though you do note in this report, you say we are a long way from being able to rely on traditional rental units to drive construction in Toronto. Uh, why do you think that is? Well, just the volumes are too low. Um, the number of units that are starting construction on an annual basis is is nowhere near uh, the level that we need to satisfy rental demand. What would make um, the math see... work so that you know the the uh, construction of those rental units was was happening? Yeah, it's a good question. We have we have over a hundred thousand units that are proposed for development as purpose built rental. There's definitely an intention to build. We have a lot of interest from uh, pension funds, institutional investors to build purpose-built rental, but only about a quarter of those units that are planned for development are actually approved. Um, we did a paper recently with the Home Builders Association, and they put forth uh, a number of policy recommendations to help to make the economics for building purpose-built rental uh, better. Uh, among those are, are reducing property taxes, uh, reducing or waiving development charges, increasing uh, density allowments, accelerating approvals. It, it actually takes 100 months for the average rental project to go from application submission mm -hmm. to actually being built. Um, prioritizing purpose-built rentals over other forms of housing. I think there needs to be a recognition that um, one of the solutions to the housing affordability crisis is building more rentals, so finding a way to get more of those into the system. Deferring HST, increasing rebates, uh, income tax write-offs, there's a whole number of things that were put forth as recommendations, and I think Knowing that, you know, condo investors who have been, again, the, 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 the majority of suppliers of rental housing are now seeing negative cash, cash flow should be a wake up call that we need to incentivize traditional purpose built rental housing because we haven't seen it to any meaningful degree since the 1970s.